Hello, I'm Jacob and this is the Preppers Bunker Outdoors. And today we are going to talk about the Essie Hungless 2. I'm out here with my adventure buddies, Kimber and Scudley. They always give me comic relief when I gotta go out and do some adventuring. Um, on the Hungless 2, I've only had it for I think about two weeks now. I've already used it quite a bit. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you some of the use, both in the kitchen and chopping down trees and whatever. Uh, and I'm gonna give you the stats and specs while we do that. And as soon as you've seen the specs on this blade, we're gonna go collect some fat wood and make ourselves a fire. And I'll give you my thoughts. I actually kind of prefer going on my adventures with goats because they'll completely stick with me better than uh, Jimbo will. And they're just hilarious, nonstop. They're the funniest things. Can't wait to do a survival trip with them. I might even uh, put some little packs on them with some supplies or something. They're a blast. When you're looking for fat wood, normally the fat wood is going to be in the stump of a deceased pine uh, tree. Now, on this particular property, I have found that since these pines are very odd and they die in an odd way, that often they'll break off flush with the ground because they've been eaten from the bottom up and the sap wood will only come down to a certain point on the tree. So sometimes you don't find fat wood at the base, you have to look up higher. In this case, I looked up higher and I didn't find any as you guys just saw. And I can tell because when I smelled the core, it smelled more like pine two by fours or fresh cut lumber than it did the resinous kind of turpentine smell of fat wood. So I'm thinking, if I get down into this stump, which I've already obviously been doing some digging in here, then I'm gonna find it. And I'm thinking that this core here that looks like fat wood likely is in fact fat wood. The problem is I wanna get a pretty nice chunk of it out of here so I can harvest it properly. So, you know, I'm doing some things that are a no-no with a blade. I mean, essentially we're digging here, but I feel very confident in my ability to dig with this thing because I've already found out that not only does this Hungless 2 hold an edge really well, but it also resharpens very easily. So I'm not too worried about it. I'm certainly not worried about damage because this thing's already been a beast. So I got down to this stump. You can definitely see a lot of pine residue, but it still doesn't smell like the fat wood that I've come to uh, love. So basically what I've been doing is just rendering it down 
scraping with this old hungless. I'm trying to get all the crap that I can off of this hunk of junk. And then we'll uh, do the spark test, make sure that it is what I want it to be. Because it does smell a little bit funky and it is a little bit, a little bit off. But man, there, I mean, there's got to be, I mean, the look of it is just perfect. So, we'll see. We'll see. Hey, get out of here, goat. <clears throat> yeah, so what we've got, what we're going to do here is we're going to get uh, some shavings, some dust together here. And... Uh, We'll give it the old spark test right out of the inside of this old rotten wet log. And if the stuff takes a spark and goes off, then uh, we know for sure what we've got. All right, here. now obviously we could skip the fat wood altogether and just use the uh, beach and tactile. Don't lick that. Stop it, goat use the beach and tactical kit here but we want to save that for an emergency right um one thing that i do wish while we're talking i do wish from the factory we've got a square spine here i have to use the edge which i really do not like to do but look at that if this were anything but fat wood, it certainly would not take like that. So I'm, uh, I gathered my fat wood, and uh, we're going to get some feather stick action going here. Um, now, I want to talk real quick. In my pictures, obviously, I chopped down that pine tree. Um, that's not what this knife is made for. So basically, guys, it can chop, but get out of here, Kimber! Oh, she just, she just wants to hog the camera, I see. Anyways, uh, that's really not what this knife is for, but the other thing that you saw that you might have found unusual was my pictures um, of questionable quality, but of uh, kind of some of the cooking work I did with it. I minced up my uh, garlic and chopped potatoes. And the reason I did that is this, no, don't eat my feather stick, and don't eat my tripod. Hey, get out of here, guys. You're going to make me take back what I told everybody about me liking you on adventures. All right, Kimber. Get! Move, your hiney, hun. Stop it, Scudley. Oh, boy, he's going to... It's a... I showed the... Stop it. That stuff, because the knife is incredibly versatile. All right, so it does make a good kitchen knife. Now, of course, as a kitchen knife, it would be better without the coating. The coating does create drag on it, obviously. But, um, I mean, it just, it's well balanced in hand, and it doesn't feel out of place working in the kitchen or really working anywhere else. So, I had what you would call just a little bit of difficulty getting this fire going. Uh, started out doing a nice feather stick. Then I moved into making some shavings on that fat wood, which I'm thinking is pretty shady at this point, and I might even just burn the whole thing. Uh, batoned some wood, of course, and uh, just had typical difficulties, okay? So first, the ferro rod broke, and it didn't just break, like come out of the handle, but it like broke and then went to a different dimension where nobody will ever find it and then like i said the fat wood was shady and uh long story short it was typically difficult luckily i did have my uh, favorite primitive fire making uh technology the finger drill as i've heard it called i don't know if you guys are familiar with making a fire using the finger drill but it's this new really cool thing anyways so the hungless 2 you saw it um, I chopped with it, you know, um, did I get the tree down? Yeah, it was a lot of chopping, guys. Um, it's not ideal for that. So if you need to chop with your hungless too, you can. But that kind of brings me to my original impressions of this blade when it just came out before I got it. 
I heard that Essie was releasing the Hoongless 2 and then it was two inches shorter and I thought, well man, it kind of seems like you're just taking a Hoongless and you're neutering it, right? But that's not, not the case. First I realized that that makes it almost the same size as a Becker BK9, so you will see a comparison between these two blades here pretty soon. But uh, it's it, it doesn't handle like a Hoongless Junior. Obviously, this is exactly a Hoongless minus two inches, okay? Same thickness, same everything. But it handles more like an SE6 Plus, almost like this is an SE8. You know, you close your eyes, you use this knife, it doesn't come out to you like a machete chopper like the Hoongless does. This comes out like more of a well-balanced knife. So... It's weird, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely different than expected. Very versatile blade, guys. It comes out at just two ounces over a pound. It's not really heavy to carry. Um, if you're not familiar with SE sheaths, they are excellent. All right, so this is your SE sheath, Kydex sheath. Clicks in, it's nice, retention is great. Um, now on the belt, I would change some things, certainly. Um, I would find a way to get this on a dangler instead of having this piece. Having this rigid mounted to your belt can be a little bit uncomfortable, especially if you carry around about five pounds of guns and ammo like I do. Um, but it's the quality is absolutely there and it's part of the value. And the other benefit to this sheath, uh, will you be able to see this? I don't know. This tag right here. Made in the U.S. of A. So SE knives obviously are made in America. Their sheath also is made in America. And like all SE knives, you saw me in there prying with this thing and stuff. I trust this knife, but so does SE. In fact, SE really trusts their knives because they have a no questions asked, no bull crap guarantee. You break it, they fix it or replace it. Whatever needs to be done, they'll make it right. They believe in their product, guys. And... They really, I think, separate themselves from the rest of the market by doing that. So, no joke, joke warranty. Now, this knife is only 3 16 of an inch thick. Most people don't think of that as a, a tank-like knife, but it is, actually. Uh, and that's a plus and a minus. Um, this actually doesn't chop quite as well as I expected it to. And I think the reason for that is... As you'll see in this picture here, underneath these scales is solid. There's no skeletonization there. That transfers the weight back on the blade. It gives it a more balanced feel, I think is why this feels more like a balanced knife than a chopper or machete. And so it feels great in hand, but for all out chopping power, you lose a bit there and you have a good bit of extra weight. Now, I was just talking about being a tank. Yeah, it's a solid piece of steel here, guys, with solid heat treat. So, um, yeah, SE trusts these, as I mentioned, 100%, and they will take care of them. And it's obvious why. It's just a super, super solid blade. I'm going to go ahead and throw this whole chunk of fatwood on there and see what it does. It's just because it irritated the heck out of me. should go up like a ding. Like crazy. Anyways, almost a full flat grind, guys. So when it comes to chopping, um, is it a chopper? Not necessarily. Will it hang with the BK9? I believe so. Batoning, it's phenomenal. Uh, people get into what grind is best for batoning. Honestly, I think it's silliness. And if I had to pick a best grind for batoning, it'd probably be full flat grind. What they tell you about friction, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. Anyways, we'll get more on that later. Um, and fine work. Guys, I can feather stick like crazy with this thing. It does not have a choil, but since it's got that little ricasso, I'm actually fully comfortable locking in my finger on this. I'm not worried about my finger slipping up on the blade because my index finger is right here. So I get a super solid grip right there, and I love it for doing my fine work. I have no issues at all. So... Could it be, you know, what, what, what do I love about this knife? 
trust it completely. Um, I, I feel like I can do anything with this blade. Um, and uh, it's just a well-balanced blade. Uh, I think I will be doing a custom dangler for it, so I'll probably send the SE sheath uh, to Dave Puzon of Positive Made Leathercraft, and I'll probably have him do an OD green leather dangler setup and replace this SE setup. Now, uh, I talk about this knife on the sheath, on the belt, I'm sorry. You throw this thing on a backpack or something with all of this molly stuff, it's good to go. This is an incredibly versatile sheath, so it's probably one of the best factory production sheaths on the market. Throw it on a backpack, throw it on your belt, throw it anywhere that you can 550 cord it to, your kit, whatever. Very, um, very multifunctional. My only thing is, if I'm going to carry it, I'm either going to carry it on a beach and tactical baldric sling, or I'm going to carry it on my belt. And so I think we can do one better on the uh, aftermarket market there with uh, Posh Made Leathercraft. But uh, if I were going to change some things about this knife, what would they be? Well, for one, I absolutely wish that we could get this in a black wash finish like the SEPR4 with a sharpened spine. I really hate using the edge for striking a ferro rod. I really hate it. So... Uh, getting stripped and getting a square spine is something that's going to happen anyways. Would I pay an extra 10 or so bucks for this knife with a black wash finish and a square spine? Absolutely. And while we're talking about that, imagine how cool this blade would look with a black wash finish and uh, any scales, especially orange scales. Oh man, that would just be ridiculously cool. So anyways, guys, I will be continuing to compare this knife to other knives. I will be continuing to review this knife. This is my first review, but I have used and abused this knife to be absolutely certain. This is a knife that you can trust. I think that the pricing is going to come down to about $150 uh, because it's brand new. But uh, I think it's a solid value. Just made in America, guys. This is a phenomenal blade at a phenomenal price. Um, you can get them on Amazon. I don't have any cool links that you can go to to get some discount or anything, maybe someday in the future, but uh, definitely check these out. It's not exactly, I think, necessarily what you would have expected. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a blessed day. Let me know what you think or what I forgot in the comment section below. Thank you very much. Do you mind? He's about to get to the teeth, and then I'm going to get mad. Well, thank you. Are they just kisses? Just kisses, okay. I know that there's... I know that this is fatwood. I know that there's resin in there. Maybe it needed to dry out a little bit. But look at all that water coming up out of there. Or maybe it's liquefying crystallized sap. Who knows? But what a turd. What a giant piece of turd. Do you mind? Could you not eat my clothing and everything else? That... That'd be pretty great. Also, guys, uh, you can get the Beach and Tactical Fire Kits like I used at beachandtactical.com or custom Beach and Tactical Slings like this Baldrick. It's the most customizable and comfortable sling on the planet. And coming soon will be some universal bottle holders. I've got some buddies like uh, Justin uh, testing these prototypes out for me right now. Um, so they will change from this, but I think we'll get them out to some other people that you might be familiar too with as well. So keep an eye out for those. And yes, this fat wood is still not burning. It's simmering. So I think like uh, Justin called, Justin Vitito called this pine on my property, it's probably not pine or fake pine. It's bull crap. He ain't this far. Played by the United States Marines by Fang the Drum Corps.